<sighs> so with the school year coming to a close, I thought I would make my video that I promised you guys some time ago about vet school and just what you can expect to learn in the first year of vet school if some of you want to go there or maybe already go there. This is just to give some insight in what my education is like and how my school sort of structures things. So uh, I just want to make a little rundown going over what subjects I've had, what I've learned, all this stuff. Overall, the school year is structured in a way whereas we have four exams in the uh, summer, fall, winter and spring. And then we will have maybe two or three subjects spanning over two to three months. And then we have exams in those subjects, we get new subjects, we go to exams in those subjects and so on. Maybe you will get a feel for it when I try to explain what I've had because some of the subjects will, you know, come again. And so I'll just try and explain it and maybe you'll get a feel of how it's structured on my school. Remember, it's my school. I don't know how other educations do it. So the very first three subjects that I had when I started were biochemistry, ethics and zoology. So let's start with the most feared and detrimental of all of them, biochemistry. So I have passed all of my subjects so far except for biochemistry, which I just failed my second attempt at here in the spring. So I may be a bit biased when I say that I really don't like it. <laughs> the first part of biochemistry is chemistry, or I guess that's the second part, but it's what we're taught first is the chemistry part. And that's sort of just, you know, learning all the functional groups, what are they called, some specific molecules, uh, your glucose, lactose, urea, and some others. Acids, bases, what defines them, buffers, chemical reaction types, and so on. <laughs> the part I find the hardest is the bio part, which is knowing different enzymes and how they react with different matters and having all of this you know, kyber, hydrates, all of this stuff, because I wasn't a very big fan of uh, biology or chemistry. So getting into this subject was extremely hard. And I will say, we also have a professor that really likes to like ask very niche questions. So you might have read all that you need to know and have a very good understanding of what you need to know. But then you get to the exam and the professor will ask a very niche question that, you know, was that one line on page 560 in your biochemistry book. So it's a bit hard to get around, but I feel like biochemistry is very feared by many people who want to start on the vet education is the impression that I'm getting. So people will say, well, I didn't do well in biology. I didn't do well in chemistry. I could never pass this subject. And I'm not a big, you know, I'm not a good example of this, but I will say that it's not as hard as you might think. Uh, people need to think about it as, yes, if you were good at these subjects in high school, you will have an easier time, but it's not that if you weren't good at them, it's impossible. So if you don't feel like you're good at biology or chemistry, don't let that hold you back from going to the vet education because yes, there are subjects like these, but they know that people might not have been the best at these subjects and are very good at helping you through. Now, zoology, on the other hand, was such a fun subject. So as someone who wants to work with birds and reptiles and so in the future, also dogs and cats, of course, but as someone who wants to, you know, differentiate into that, it's a very cool subject to have because it's where we learn a little bit about birds, reptiles, all of these different animal groups than the dogs and cats and horses and whatnot. So, you know, it's on a very basic level, but it's really just learning about all the different kingdoms. Where do all the animals originate from? How can we sort of see the bone structures have changed? How have some animals utilized different parts of their bodies? And it's a very actually evolution oriented subject, which is super interesting. The unfortunate part is that the subject isn't taken very seriously 
it's very much the professor said this himself he said that we only have this subject so that when you start on vet school you have something about animals because else people would drop out if they only had ethics and biochemistry the professor even said that not me and i feel like he wasn't very motivated for the subject even i asked him some questions because nerd and when he answered he seemed very uninterested and didn't really know the answer didn't really want to be asked questions and so so it was a bit of a shame that zoology was kind of thrown in the bag but it was interesting nonetheless and it was a good introduction to anatomy we had i believe three or four dissections we dissected each animal group except for reptiles which i'm really sad about but we dissected a turkey we dissected a fish salmon i think it was and then we dissected a rat so you know you have your mammals your fish and your birds so it's sort of a good introduction to anatomy we start to get some latin terms that we are going to use later okay i'm just gonna put my glasses on so lastly for these three subjects are ethics and ethics i wasn't a big fan of but i mean it could somewhat be interesting and it's basically a lot of old theories from some old dudes in the 1800s that we go through obviously with an animal perspective so we look a lot of theories up and look at how are animals viewed in these are they considered equals and how are the animal happiness sort of defined are they when is it when an animal is living up to its natural potential is it when we provide them with whatever they want the most? You know, all of these different things. It can be kind of interesting from a pet care perspective, but it was a lot of talking. And I'm the kind of person that really likes when there is one correct answer to something. But here it's, you know, theories and talking and all of this. It wasn't really me, but I can see that it could be interesting to some. Also, if you think about it, vets often do get put into situations where they have to make hard choices. It could be whether to put a sick dog down or offer surgery. I also learned that if someone comes in with a sick animal and doesn't have money to pay for the surgery, what are our options? If they actually don't want to pay, we need to call the police because that is considered animal cruelty. So it's pretty cool to know these different things and get some stories from our professors who are vets most of them so yeah i guess it's a subject you have to go through and you might find yourself having fun sometimes so i went to these exams in the fall and i passed ethics and i passed zoology did not pass biochemistry uh, and so i had to do, go do a redo exam which was in spring but between fall and winter, we then get new subjects. And it was, you know, two subjects, but they sort of put additional subjects into those subjects. So I would say it's four subjects that I have. And those were cytology and histology, and then anatomy and physiology. So cytology, you could call biochemistry 2.0, but just without the chemistry part. Whereas biochemistry is very much in depth, how does different chemical reactions happen in the cell? Cytology zooms out and just looks at how does the organelles just work overall? What are their functions and how do they work together to sort of create the protein synthesis, the making of ATP, uh, DNA, RNA, how does it all work together? Histology is something that is still haunting me because it is also a big part of the anatomy subject. You have probably seen some histology samples before. It is the microscopy subject where we have to look in a microscope and be able to identify different things. And it could be tissue, muscle structures. It could be identifying different glands and blood supplies. And just in general, be able to look at something through the microscope and know whatever we're looking at. So again, these were one subject, but we were taught in them separately. So it's basically two different subjects. And cytology, I'm not a big fan. I gotta admit, because it's biochemistry again. And histology, I mean, it's hard to get and it's, it, it can be a very, very diff difficult subject. 
But once you get it and once you can sort of start to identify the different things in different tissue, so I might see one thing in this tissue and recognize the same thing in another tissue, it's a pretty good feeling and you sort of feel like you know your stuff. The next two subjects are also the same subject, but not really. And it's anatomy and physiology. And oh boy, these are such huge subjects. We got them obviously here in the end of fall and I'm just now finishing them. As I mentioned, physiology exam was yesterday and then I have my anatomy exam next week. And there's a reason for them spanning this long and it's that it's just such huge subjects. It's overall, it's know everything about an animal and how it works. And you need to mention this for dogs and cats and pigs and horses and cows. Those are like the five core animals that we learn about here. But to describe them separately, anatomy is describe all the body parts and I mean all the body parts, we are talking skin, we are talking bones, we are talking organs, we are talking parts of the organ. So you might know that this is humorous, but no, we also need to know this part of humorous, this part of humorous, this part of humorous. So, you know, it's a very big subject, anatomy. And anatomy is also no a basic understanding of what these organs does, obviously. So. What is the function of the stomach? How does the liver work overall? And what different blood supplies do the different organs have? And oh yeah, all of this in Latin or Greek, uh, mostly Latin. If you have ever heard Latin before, it's just Harry Potter spells. Now, luckily there is no Latin in physiology, but it is still a pretty hard subject because it's no how everything in your body works. It's how does the pancreas secrete enzymes? How are those enzymes made? How does the kidneys work and how do they make urine? What do they reabsorb in the tubulus? And how does your heart work? What nerves innovate? And all of these different things, the brain, the saliva, the everything. How does everything work? Hormones, all of that stuff. So as you can probably tell, I'm pretty busy right now. Um, luckily just fin finished physiology, but now that it's anatomy time, I'm pretty behind on anatomy because I kind of used all of my time on physiology. So I'm back to learning Latin now. <laughs> but even though these are big subjects, they are obviously the fundamentals of learning about diseases and everything else. You need to know how this stuff works before you can know how to fix it. So it's fun subjects. They're hard, but learning how everything works is actually pretty cool. Especially I didn't, I was, I'm dumb. I don't know how the kidneys work. Didn't know what they did. Didn't know what the function of the liver was. Didn't know how different things worked. So for me, just to be able to be like, oh, so that's what a liver does is pretty cool. And then, you know, transfer it over to diseases later. I'm pretty excited for that. It's gonna be cool. So in comes Christmas and I have exams in cytology and histology, but you know, anatomy, physiology, we're just continuing, no exams. And I unfortunately did not pass my cytology and histology either. So now I have biochemistry and cytology and histology to, you know, go to redo exams in. Okay, so the last new subject that I'm gonna have was here after Chris Cru Christmas? After Christmas, we had genetics and it was such a fun subject. I love genetics. So genetics is obviously about DNA, RNA, proteins, gene stuff. So it sets a foundation for breeding guidance. You know, how are disease transferred? What are the chances of having a disease transferred? Um, if we have dogs, dogs that are in family, what is the chances of the offspring getting the same alleles and therefore having some inbreeding problems? So it's, it was super fun, uh, but it could also just be like fur color. Uh, if we have 
two dogs with two different colors and their parents look like this, what color will the offspring have? Um, and I really like that. It was pretty fun also because we got some math. So, you know, we're getting into those subjects where there is sort of one set answer and I really like that. I also feel like I just enjoyed genetics a bit more because I finally found my study technique. So I wasn't behind and I was actually going with the flow. I went to the lectures, I took in whatever knowledge they had. I came home and I wrote it all down, learned a lot from it and just, you know, was really up to pace. I passed genetics and I passed cytology and histology, which I had redo exams for in the spring. I then failed biochemistry for the second time, but that's totally fine because I had decided to just focus on genetics and cytology and histology because those were three subjects basically. It was a lot. And to also have biochemistry there and also have anatomy and physiology was kind of hard. So I just decided to put anatomy and physiology on the shelf because those exams I have here in the summer and then biochemistry I failed again and then I have a third attempt here in the fall. So yeah, those exams were over and then in my spring summer period, which I'm in now, I didn't have any new subjects. It was just physiology and anatomy, which were enough. It's big subjects, so totally fine with only being those two. And I actually decided just to focus on physiology because of all of these redo exams that I had. I hadn't been to many of the physiology and anatomy lectures, so I've been really behind on these subjects. Um, so it, it's good to have this period to, you know, catch up, but it's not enough time to catch up on both of them. So I focused on physiology, which I was at an exam to yesterday. I don't really have a feeling of how it went. Um, and then anatomy, I have in a week. I don't plan on passing. I mean, I wouldn't be mad because I haven't put that much time into it. Um, but then I have redo exams in August, which is actually pretty cool because that means I can catch up before I start the new school year and before I get new subjects, then I can pass the exam, hopefully. <laughs> I also just want to talk about the first year in general because obviously a lot happened. I moved, I lived on my own for the first time. I've done a lot of different things, which just is a whole lot when you're starting on a new education as well. So I think the first year just gets automatically extremely hard because of those things. You need to find your study technique, which I've just found now, but then it's too late because I have all of these redo exams that go in and ruin everything. So it, it, don't take it too harsh if you're having a hard time on your first year. And lastly, talking about exam attempts. Uh, I do have three attempts at each exam. And if I don't, you know, pass the exam at my third attempt, I can just uh, ask, you know, the school if I can take another attempt. That's probably the easiest way to explain it. So it's, it's really a gift to have these redo exams. And I know a lot of schools have them. So don't look at it as a failure. Look at it as a learning experience. What went wrong? Why couldn't I study for this exam? How should I maybe change my study technique and so on. So yeah. Luckily, I don't have any plans this summer, so if I have an anatomy exam or maybe a physiology exam that I have to redo, you know what, it's fine. I can use a couple of hours every day to catch up. And then I just have the summer vacation and don't have to worry about getting behind on more subjects. So yeah, that was a, a little rundown on my vet school's first year subjects. Some get it right, right away, some don't. It's totally fine, we all learn differently. Yeah, I hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, hopefully got a little insight in remember my vet school. Some of the others you're looking at might be different. Um, maybe the fundamentals are the same. I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, uh, this summer you're probably gonna get bombarded with videos because I've just been sitting in with a lot of ideas but haven't had the time to do anything. So hopefully in a week's time, I can just get a lot of videos out there uh, for you guys to enjoy. But uh, till then, bye.